Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Mr. Grant Simic. He's joining us here as uh, Executive Population Health Partner for U.S. Neurology at UCB. He's joining us to talk about some real-world studies that address topics such as the cultural attitudes regarding epilepsy across various stakeholders that were presented at the American Epilepsy Society's 75th annual meeting last year. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Grant. Thank you so much for taking the the time this morning. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, give us a bit of your professional background uh, briefly and then talk about um, what it means to be executive population health partner for U.S. Neurology at UCB. Okay, so I've, uh, my background's uh, um, uh, a little varied. I started in the industry around uh, 25 years ago and I've worked in various different roles uh, in strategy and uh, with different products and different therapeutic areas. Um, and right now, and for the last four years, I've been um, with the Neurology Outcomes Team at UCB, and our focus is really on how we can better understand some of the, the challenges that, that are present for people with epilepsy, uh, particularly in the U.S., and thinking about you know better understanding their patient journey and some of the, the challenges they have and gaps in that journey, um, and seeing what we can do to better understand those gaps and you know start to build some solutions to help patients you know achieve their you know health outcomes and health goals. Give us a brief look into what epilepsy is, and then talk about I guess some of the main challenges people living with epilepsy face on a daily basis. Sure. So epilepsy is a, a condition that's a it's a neurological condition that is really centered around a, a lot of um, uh, the neurons in the brain that are, are not firing in the correct way. So, and there's many different types of epilepsy, uh, but the core problem is to do with the neurons and the way they connect with each other in the brain, which, you know, manifest as seizures. And so that's the, the hallmark of, of epilepsy. People that are having, you know, um, seizures that are, that are, um, you know, not, not just a one-off because of a, an illness or some other reasons, but actually just ongoing seizures. And so, um, the challenges people have uh, are many. Um, part of the challenge is, first thing, you know, being diagnosed is, is difficult because some of these seizures are very um, subtle and are hard to detect. It's not always the one you you might think of, where somebody's, you know, falling onto the floor and and shaking. That they're the obvious seizures, but there are many different types of seizures. And so, part of the challenge is being diagnosed. There are many challenges to do with finding the right treatment for each patient. Every patient's very individual. There's a lot of um, Obviously, it's a lot of science, but there's also a lot of art for the epileptologist to try and find the exact right medicine or combinations of medicines to make, uh, you know, to help patients either reduce or hopefully get to a point where they're seizure free. Um, so there's a lot of different challenges. And then you've got, you know, broader challenges around, around access to care, finding the right, uh, you know, the right doctor that's an expert in epilepsy. Um, and then there's layers beyond that, which are, you know, to do with insurance and, you know, there are um, different cultures and cultural beliefs around epilepsy that may have an impact on the way you view the disease and, and um, think about um, different ways of managing it. So there's a, there's a range of different challenges that, that exist for people with epilepsy. Now, obviously, these, this wide range of challenges would create some huge uh, gaps as far as care, as far as diagnosis, a uh, huge, huge unmet needs within this uh, community as far as getting adequate health care. Uh, how is UCB uh, working to address some of those, uh, some of those challenges? Yeah, it's, uh, you're exactly right. There are many different challenges. Um, most of the work at UCB is thinking about how we help solve this from a, um, you know, from a uh, medicines perspective. So what are the new solutions that we can either develop or co-develop with other companies um, to, to help, you know, uh, improve the treatment uh, outcomes of, for patients. Um, but the work of my team is more looking at some of the, the broader um, issues and seeing how we can, you know, think about um, other gaps that may occur outside of not just finding the right treatment, but, you know, getting to the right doctor and, you know, helping overcome some of the other barriers to, to care. I understand, uh, as I said in the beginning, that UCB presented some studies at the AES 2021 on some of the cultural attitudes that you alluded to earlier uh, in the conversation regarding epilepsy from patients, caregivers, uh, communities, healthcare stakeholders. What would you say were the major findings from these studies and what implications do you believe they have on the epilepsy community? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question because one of the things we have realized is that, that not everybody has the same 
journeying with epilepsy. So if you're a patient, um, you know, there's a, there's a, um, a kind of a general journey that somebody takes, but, but it's very individualized. And then when you start thinking about some of the different subpopulations within epilepsy, so um, one of the things we're thinking about is different ethnicities, for example. Um, if you are of a specific ethnicity, you may have a really um, slightly different or a, a, a very different um, experience of epilepsy because of the way um, you know that that disease is thought about within a particular culture, um, or the way that um, your family may be thinking about about um, epilepsy. And so that's kind of the starting point to to recognise that not everybody's the same, and that that and there are groups of individuals who are culturally thinking about epilepsy difference. That was kind of the starting point for that. Um, and so when we went down the track, we thought, okay, well, let's let's deep dive on this and understand who are the different subpopulations. And one of the most obvious uh, groups is um, Hispanic uh, Americans living with epilepsy. Um, Hispanic Americans with epilepsy make up, there's about 700,000 or more uh, people um, living with epilepsy who are of Hispanic um, heritage. And so we thought this is a huge group. It's, it makes up 18.5% of the entire U.S. population. So we wanted to deep dive on some of the, um, you know, unique differences that were experienced by people with epilepsy who were Hispanic. And, and that's kind of the starting point for the research that we've been doing. Um, some of the things we found, and just, uh, just top line on the research, we did two parts to the research. Uh, we looked at, um, we and we spoke to a number of the healthcare stakeholders involved in epilepsy care. So we started with epileptologists and neurologists and the, the people who deal directly with epilepsy. But we also got into the community talking to, you know, um, uh, directors of community health centers who were, um, you know, helping primarily a Hispanic population achieve better outcomes and, and manage their various conditions in the community. And what we've learned was that many different things actually, but what we learned is that there's, there is a slightly different um, experience of epilepsy. If you happen to be Hispanic, there are different challenges. The obvious one of course is language, uh, language barriers. Not everybody has great uh, English skills and may not have great written English skills. Um, and there's, there's also, um, a really important um, focus on the family um, from the provider perspective. You know, there's a lot of input from the family on do I even go to see a doctor? Do I, which type of doctor do I go to see? If I get prescribed a medication, would I take that medication? And these things may be um, typically very individual decisions, but in the Hispanic context, um, it really tends to be much more of a family decision and a fam there's a lot of family influence on all the different parts of of um, the treatment of someone with epilepsy and approach to epilepsy itself. And so we took those learnings and then we went uh, and did um, some further research with patients and caregivers uh, to better understand that. And that, that was probably the big finding for me with, with you know, our strategy at UCB has been really built around um, this concept of my epilepsy, my journey, meaning really realizing that everybody has their own individual journey, but We've realised that that isn't that doesn't apply as well in the Hispanic community, and so so we've been we've taken those learnings um, about the um, Hispanic experience of care and the way that it's, epilepsy is thought about, and really try to think about how we can do things differently at UCB for this kind of large subgroup of patients that um, you know perhaps we haven't done enough for in the past. Now, Grant, I also understand that uh, you conduct some research in partnership with the Arizona State University College of Health Solutions uh, concerning uh, social determinants of health as they relate to epilepsy. Could you talk briefly about that particular uh, area of research with Arizona State University? Yeah, I, I certainly can talk about that. That's, that was a really interesting project. We actually uh, just published the, the research um, last month um, from that uh, that project. And uh, what we what we what that project was about was thinking about um, some earlier research that where we saw that many patients who were diagnosed with epilepsy um, are often untreated for a long period of time. About a third of patients who've been diagnosed um, are still not treated after three years, and we don't we didn't know why that was. We had really no idea. There's no data to support what was going on and what the problems were for those patients. And so we wanted to conduct a study to understand if some of these social determinants of health, which as you would know, is a really a big factor when it comes to health equity, those social determinants do play a major role. We wanted to see 
what role, if any, they played in those treatment delays that we'd seen in, in other research. And so um, to give you the highlight, basically the answer is yes, there are a number of different um, uh, social determinants of health that play a role in um, delays to epilepsy um, care and also some patients that were just totally untreated. So things like, for example, um, an older age, people in the 65 plus age group uh, were more than twice as likely to be untreated. Um, we saw that um, factors like uh, marital status, for example, people who are widowed um, have almost a three times um, likelihood of being untreated. And there's other issues like homelessness, as you would expect, um, as uh, you know, a big factor in being untreated or receiving uh, delayed treatment and even employment and employment status plays a role in, in delays to um, actually starting on a seizure medication. And so there's some of the things we, we learned in this paper that are really interesting and go hand in hand with a lot of the other research we're conducting around health equity in, uh, in epilepsy. Well, if you would give us a website where we can go and learn more about uh, UCB and the uh, research that you're conducting there and also about this particular study as well, I'm sure that there's a website with links that would lead to uh, this subject and more. Uh, certainly. Um, so we have information on our website, uh, ucb-usa.com, and um, you can find um, some information about this this uh, studies these studies there. Um, this has also been um, made available on the American Epilepsy Society website. We have abstracts of the research available there, but we are also working to um, put more of this information online um, as well. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you this morning, Grant. I appreciate you taking the time. Hopefully, we'll speak again. Thank you, and I appreciate the opportunity. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Mr. Grant Simic, Executive Population Health Partner for U.S. Neurology at UCB. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.